Hello there, I hope you are having a wonderful time. This is Nuhu Nui Sengja no Ayuba, and I'm here trying to answer some of your questions. All right, so um, actually, I'm bringing you interaction from Brazil, and this is a platform which is aimed at uniting curious people, people like you and I. Who have interest you know in learning about cultures and traveling also especially to brazil brazil is a good place to travel to and i'm here to testify i would share from time to time videos to answer some of your questions and comments about this country so you don't have limitations actually okay to what you can ask uh, but make sure you ask responsibly. That is what I insist, all right? So in today's video, we will answer two comments. Okay, we will answer two comments. So um, let's see. The first comment comes from uh, Lapchong Babas, okay? And it reads, I would like you to talk about a few Topics ranging from the traditional meals, how receptive are they to foreigners and expatriates? How easy or difficult is it to learn Brazilian language, that's Portuguese, for beginners, foreigners, especially those coming from other continents, primarily for education and interracial and intercultural marriages? All right, that's a very interesting question, Lapchung. Okay, that's a very interesting one. So, uh, first of all, uh, I will try to answer that, you know, by projecting a map of Brazil. Brazil is located in the southern, in the, in South America, for those of you who don't know. So, um, it is basically divided into five geopolitical zones. Just as any other country, you know, we have the strategic division of Brazil. And each zone, you know, has a, a, a peculiar characteristics. But we cannot say that uh, they don't have things in common, okay? But uh, in the north, for example, that is um, colored green, we have a food called manisoba, okay? It is a dish that is common in that region, okay? The key ingredients are, all right, cassava leaves. You can find them in Nigeria very easily, okay? In order to prepare manisoba, <laughs> you would get surprised. The leaves are, you know, ground and cooked for about a week. So it's very funny to say a week, you know, cooking just, uh, just leaves that you would eat in a few minutes and even forget, so. But uh, they like it a lot, okay? And why do they do, would they have to cook it for a week? Because you have hydrogen cyanide, cassava leaves. It's a toxic element, you know, that is present in that. So after such process, they mix it up with, let's say, fish, meat, and uh, and you know the ingredients of their choice, and they serve it with rice, you know, with uh, other foods. All right. So it's very nice. I like it a lot. Okay. So the second is uh, pamonia. So pamonia is um, is I classify it as either a dessert or an appetizer because it's not a meal itself. Okay, you can eat it, you know, before you have a main meal. So uh, the main ingredient is maize. Okay, so generally you grind the maize. Okay. And then you mix it with sugar and uh, cocoa, butter. Then you wrap it in the husk of the same uh, fresh uh, corn that you used. Okay, you cook it until it gets hard. So it's a very nice stuff, natural also. Okay, the third I'm going to talk about is churrasco. Okay, so churrasco is uh, something you can even find uh, on the street of Lagos. Okay, it's, it's, it's very common. You can find it on the street of uh, Kano in Nigeria. Okay, but when you come to Brazil and ask them churrasco, okay, the first thing is south. 
The southern people, they love churrasco a lot, okay? They are called gaucho, okay? So if you come to Brazil and you want to have the best churrasco, don't hesitate to visit a gaucho restaurant. And the name gaucho, I call Ronaldinho and ask him his second name, okay? The second name he bears, okay? So, all right. So the third, the next is um, feijoada. Feijoada is very common in the southeastern region of Brazil. So the southeastern region, you know, uh, is, is, I think, is, the, is one of the strongest center of commerce in Brazil. So you have Minas Gerais, you have Sao Paulo, and Rio de Janeiro. I think they are the most famous places in Brazil. So feijoada is a traditional food that is common in those places but let me tell you something don't be uh, deceived it's not just common in those regions it extends to the whole of the country okay you can have uh, feijoada in rio grande do sul that is the extreme south you can have it in the extreme north also okay but it's very common in the south eastern part of brazil it carries the mark of history. So good Brazilian feijoada is prepared with uh, black beans, you know, sausage, pork and beef. So if you are curious or you want to have a taste of a typical Brazilian feijoada, maybe you can visit our website. I wouldn't, I don't know which to indicate, but uh, uh, you can visit any website. Okay. So the feijoada comes, when it comes, you normally eat it with rice and, you know, farofa. Farofa is, uh, is a form of gari. When you go to Nigeria, you know gari is farofa. Okay, but in Brazil, it's prepared without the stage of fermentation. The fermentation they, uh, they undergo here in Brazil is lesser than the one you find in Nigeria. So... The farofa in Nigeria is a little bit uh, sour, okay? Here, you don't feel this taste. Okay, so so let's go to the next. The next is vatapa. Vatapa is very common in the northeastern part of Brazil, okay? It is a plate made from dried bread, flour, ginger, paper, milk and tomato okay there are so many other ingredients that can be included so it can be made it can be prepared using let's say fish you can prepare uh, it can be prepared using shrimps it can be prepared using chicken or even meat as an african when you taste butter bar you will identify yourself with the food because it has a tropical taste it is historic okay so you have the Yoruba people coming during the slavery period. They brought, you know, Vatapa to Brazil. And um, today you have Vatapa in the whole of Northeast and the North also. So don't be surprised when you come to Brazil, you would find some Yoruba words. Maybe in other videos, we're going to find time to look at the specific links between Africa or and the North also so don't be surprised when you come to brazil you'd find some yoruba words maybe in other videos we're gonna find time to look at the specific links between africa or nigeria and brazil moving further receptiveness of brazilians is visible i think it's uh because of the mixture of the cultures that you have in the country okay they are very receptive so portuguese is it difficult yes it is difficult okay if i tell you it's easy i'm lying to you uh although uh when you are determined you would get to a point that uh you would feel that the language is not as difficult as it looks but the formal form of portuguese is uh is is tedious uh reasonable level level in portuguese it's okay to live on the uh, in the society 
uh, the, the street language is simpler. It is very easy to speak the street Portuguese, no restrictions, and uh, people don't, you know, mind if you are speaking in the wrong way, or, okay, not like other countries that interracial and intercultural marriages. Yes, it's very common here in Brazil, okay, although recently it has become a little bit difficult. People are trying to, you know, separate recently, but in Brazil, it's easier to get married when you compare to Nigeria. Nigeria, a house man with an Igbo woman is almost impossible. This comment comes from a big C, A, B, laughing. All right, he says, are you studying in English or Portuguese? If Portuguese, how has learning been in a totally new language? Like hearing, uh, like hearing engineering definitions and laws in Portuguese. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. This is very interesting. That's thanks for the question, ABC. They speak the Brazilian Portuguese. It's a little bit different from the Portuguese spoken in Portugal, okay? But uh, it has its own structures and the way they pronounce is a little bit different, okay? So, we learn in Portuguese here, the universities, the, pr the primary schools, the secondary schools, uh, the, the process of learning is in Portuguese, okay? So when you go to the postgraduate, for example, level, master degree, doctorate, that is when you will need English, okay? So, for example, for the first time in almost 10 years, I had an English class. That was last year, okay? I had a pure English class, the presentations, everything was in English. So that was the first time. So there were challenges, of course. It scares at the beginning. But when you, you are immersed in the language, when you are inserted in the society, when you decide to take up the challenge to learn the Portuguese, you would find it very interesting. Okay. So uh, I brought an illustration to show you you know, some of the challenges you might find when you come here to, to learn as an English speaker. You have the, for example, you have the periodic table and someone who has basis in chemistry. Well, the first element is hydrogen. So in Portuguese, it is hidrogenio, if you can see it there. They have the accent, which is, is an advantage in the Portuguese language. So spelling in Portuguese is not an it's not a big deal. In English, it's harder to spell. Okay. In English, there is this unfaithfulness between the writing and the spoken. So sometimes you write one thing, you do another. So any accent you see in Portuguese is not scary. There are just few of them. So you have hydrogenio. All right. So the second is helio. It also has an, another accent, right? So, uh, helium. So, you have lithium, lithium, beryllium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon, and so on and so forth. So, what is so special? What, where would you pay more attention when you're, to, when you're studying the periodic table, for example? So, you have sulfur. Is the first so for in Portuguese as an element is called enxofre, but that changes when it uh, it makes it is part it becomes part of a compound. Okay, when it forms a compound, it becomes different. Okay, for example, a tetraoxosulfate six acid in Portuguese is ácido sulfúrico. The nomenclatures. Most, most of the nomenclatures in organic chemistry are still the old names. The IUPACs, you find them mostly in the organic chemistry. Okay, so the second is iron. In, in, in Portuguese, you say ferro. So, I think it's easier to learn iron in Portuguese than in English because of this, uh, the symbol of, 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 of iron. So it's 
ferro you just remember f e fer you remember the name of the element okay so this particular element is the same as element and is the same when it forms a compound okay so the next is silver okay silver and prata in portuguese okay <clears throat> so the next is gold ouro the sound is similar it's almost um, close to the portuguese sound because portuguese is a daughter to the latin language so it has these advantages when some sometimes you have some definitions that are directly latin so you have the meaning it's not the diluted meaning okay but sometimes you also have problems when you have definitions from english coming to portuguese if you are coming to brazil to study you sit down you you try to walk if normal students brazilian students walk four hours a day you are supposed to walk at least eight hours okay eight hours but advisably i would advise you to walk 12 okay but four times four times or oh, say that. okay so if they are walking four hours walk three times that's 12 hours okay so by so doing you will be helping yourself and you will get an equivalent of points they will score eight you will score eight they will score ten you will score ten okay so it will be as if you are together you've been together for a long time but the advantage comes after okay you will have advantage after because you are upgrading your language at the same time you know acquiring a skill okay before you know it's uh the portuguese would complement your english and your level would advance i hope i could answer some of the few questions if you have comments please write them down and let's see how we can help each other okay thanks for watching and uh, see you in the next video have a nice time